Hello! In this video, we will cover four basic skills for finding articles for your literature review or research paper. By the end of this video, you should be able to identify the type of information needed for a literature review or research paper, list the information resources that are important for scholarly research within a discipline, create a list of search terms to use with research databases and search engines, and utilize techniques for narrowing and expanding a search to refine the results. To begin, let's talk about three types of sources that are frequently used in research papers. News sources, gray literature, and scholarly sources. News sources are defined as any newspaper, magazine, blog, or article posted on a website. These sources are designed to inform you about an event or a topic of general interest. News sources reflect events, issues, interests, opinions, and trends of the time period in which they were published. These may be used to introduce a topic in your paper, provide background information on the topic, or to provide evidence of specific actions or opinions that occurred. News sources, however, are usually not used in a literature review. For example, this article posted on the website of Annie E. Casey Foundation contains reliable and credible information, but it's just a summary of data points from a larger study. It's designed to inform the reader of research that exists but it's not the actual source of the findings. In your literature review, do not settle for sources that provide a summary of another source. Go ahead and track down the original study. Gray literature is a term used to describe reports and studies that are published by institutions such as government agencies or nonprofit research centers. While the research methods used in these studies may be rigorous and credible, these sources do not go through the process of peer review and are therefore not considered scholarly sources. Gray literature is most useful in the introduction and evidence section of the paper, but their use in a literature review may depend on the discipline that you're writing for or the purpose of the literature review. Here's an example of gray literature. This is an original research report conducted by the United States Department of Agriculture. It includes sections that explain its data and methodology, findings, and list sources that contributed to the development of the study. This report adds new and original knowledge to the conversation about food deserts. We recommend evaluating the authority of this source and the relevancy and its credibility before you consider including it. But depending on how it's used, we feel this report could provide a valuable contribution to the scholarly conversation about food deserts and may be appropriate for your literature review. Scholarly sources are publications that are written by an expert in the field and evaluated through a rigorous review process before publication. These publications do not summarize and report on existing knowledge. Instead, scholarly publications analyze what has already been discovered about a topic and then produces evidence that creates new knowledge or a new way of looking at a topic. Scholarly sources should be used heavily in a literature review. Essentially, the literature review provides a place to describe how your research topic has already been discussed in the literature, and it sets your readers up to understand how your work contributes to the scholarship in the field. This is a peer-reviewed scholarly article published in an open access journal that employs a rigorous peer-reviewed process before work is accepted for publication. There are several authors who are experts in their field, and together they conducted an original research study. Within the study, there are sections that describe their methods and results. In addition, the sources their work is built upon are listed in the reference section. In this lesson, we will talk exclusively about how to find scholarly journal articles since they're so important for literature reviews and research papers. Now, let's review some of the tools available through McCain Library and available freely on the web that are best for locating scholarly articles. The first set of tools are what we like to call article aggregators, they license content from different publishers like Sage, Wiley, Oxford, and others, and make the work searchable through their database interface. These tools are not limited to the content of one single publisher or to the content of a specific discipline. The most popular are Galileo Discover, JSTOR, Project Muse, Google Scholar, and WorldCat. We recommend using one or two of these search tools to develop a general understanding of the literature available. Please note, however, these are not comprehensive tools. They're just a starting point. When conducting a serious research project, it's important to identify the databases that are most used in your discipline. Many of these databases are discipline-specific that only contain content from the best journals and resources in that field. 
Often, these discipline-specific databases have special search features that make it easier to narrow down a search. McCain Library subscribes to nearly 300 databases. To find the one that's right for you, try using the database's A to Z list to see a comprehensive list of databases available through McCain Library. This list is sortable by subject area and by database type. Browsing the research guides created by McCain Library librarians, many of the guides provide course-related recommendations. In addition to identifying databases available through McCain Library that are best for your search, many guides will include recommendations to tools that are freely available on the web. It's a great place to start your research project. Finally, get in touch with a librarian. They absolutely love to help. You can set up an appointment, send an email, initiate a chat session when the service is live, or drop by the research desk and ask for the librarian on call. Now that you know the type of information you need for your literature review or research paper and how to find the best research databases, let's talk about search features within most databases that will help you narrow and broaden your search. These include understanding the default search mode of the database and how you can manipulate it to broaden or narrow a search, leveraging subject headings to build a better set of keyword terms, and utilizing the search filters to narrow your search. Let's start by discussing the search mode. The search mode is how the database interprets the keywords that you are entering into the search box. Most databases default to one of two search modes, find all my search terms or Boolean phrase search. Find all my search terms is the search mode used by default by search engines like Google, JSTOR, and Galileo Discover. This is also known as natural language searching. It prepares the database to find all the terms entered into a search box, regardless of the order in which the terms were entered. This means you can enter a question or a string of keywords. The search engine will find all the search terms entered in any order. In databases set to the Find All My Search Terms search mode, users must place quotation marks around phrases to prevent words in the phrase from being searched separately. The Boolean phrase search mode, however, automatically treats terms as a phrase unless they're separated by the word AND or another Boolean operator like OR. In the sample search provided, the words daddy and lessons will be found next to each other as a phrase, but since the Boolean operator AND separates daddy lessons from the words country and song, the words country and song are not required to be found near each other within the article or the other search results. Pause the video and take a moment to try this in your favorite search tool. See if adding the word AND between your search terms expands the results. If not, the default search mode is probably set to find all my search terms. We will be talking more about the power of searching using Boolean phrase search mode later in this video. But for now, just note that if you are obtaining too few results, the search mode may be set to Boolean phrase search. Just add the word AND in between your keywords, and that will expand your search results. If you're receiving too many results, the search may be set to find all my search terms, and you will want to put quotation marks around the terms that should be searched as a phrase. This will narrow the search results. Okay, now let's transition to another part of the search mode. The default search mode controls where the search terms are found within the works listed in the search results. What this means is that many databases are set to search the full text of the article or book, which includes identifying keywords anywhere in the title, the citation, and the abstract, and the subject headings, and the full text of the article or the book. Other databases, however, may be set only to search the default settings, like the abstract, the subject field, and the title. As you may have guessed, this affects the number of search results you will find. If you are finding too many results, you may want to limit your search to the abstract title and subject heading, since finding your keywords in these sections will ensure that the article is more significantly about the topic. If you're getting too few articles, look at your terms and consider which terms may be useful to locate in the full text of the article. In this sample search, I'm looking for the song Daddy Lessons in the full text of the article since I'm open to articles that discuss Daddy Lessons as an example but may only briefly mention the song. All of the articles, however, must be significantly focused on country music, which is why I chose to search for the terms country music or country song in the abstract of the article. 
The abstract is a description of the article, so if my keywords are found in the summary of the article, I can bet the article will be significantly about that topic. Our favorite way to quickly narrow a search in Discover Galileo is to click on the X next to also search within the full text of the articles. This is located underneath the expanders menu on the left side of the screen. Pause the video now and take a moment to try this technique in the Discover Galileo search tool on the library website. Did you receive a more manageable number of results? Another common search feature in database searching is the presence of subject headings. These are terms added to each database entry that identify the core concepts in the book or article. We recommend keeping a list of subject headings that are meaningful to you and using these in constructing new searches. By reviewing this list of terms, you may also discover terms that you did not originally consider using. If you click on a title of an item inside your search results, you'll find a list of hyperlinked subject headings that may be used to find more books or articles on the topic within that database. This is particularly useful in finding books using the library catalog WorldCat. We'll return to this topic later in the video, but for now, pause the video and take a moment to play with this feature and see how it improves your ability to find fantastic sources. Okay, now for the really fun part of database searching, search filters. Once you have entered your keywords, hit search, and retrieve the list of search results, the search filters will provide you with many ways to narrow your search results. In most databases, search filters are located in the menu on the left side of the screen. Nearly all search filters will let you narrow your search by date and the type of format of the work. Additional search filters to consider include language. Don't know any other languages aside from English? Narrow the results to just the languages that you can read. Publication title. This is particularly helpful when researching a topic in newspapers. By selecting a few national papers and a few local papers, you can quickly develop an understanding of an issue from both a local and national level. And our personal favorite, subject. Remember those subject headings we were talking about just a moment ago? This filter provides a sortable list of the most used subject headings in your search results. Not only can you use the checkboxes to select ones that you want to find in your search, this list of subject headings essentially provides you with a table of contents of the most common topics discussed in your search results. If you're wise, you could use this to help you identify important subtopics to address in your literature review or research paper. You will also find search filters in the advanced search settings. In the historical databases, America History and Life and Historical Abstracts, the filters in the advanced search features allows you to narrow your search to a specific historical period that the article covers. In the medical and psychology databases like Medline and PsycInfo, you'll find options to narrow to literature review articles or specific characteristics of a study like age or the sex of a participant. Some databases such as Academic Search Complete and Business Source Complete will even let you identify how many pages an article may be. This is really useful when you want to make sure that you find an article that's at least more than a short blurb on a page. Finally, using an advanced search in Discover Galileo will let you narrow your search down to a specific discipline. Pause the video and take a moment to explore your favorite search tool. Does it have a filter that will let you narrow your search? Think about the circumstances in which you might choose to narrow your search using these filters. Though most databases default to find all my search terms or a natural language mode of searching, understanding how to use Boolean operators and constructing a search will provide you with tremendous amount of control over your searching in both search modes. Boolean search operators are able to be used in almost every database available through McCain Library, so let's take a moment to help you become familiar with Boolean operators and how they can be useful to your search. The three Boolean operators are and, or, and not. These terms are placed between keywords to instruct the database how to handle those keywords. Using the Boolean operator AND between two or more terms will require each of those terms be found in each item in the result. This is a great way for combining concepts that you know you want to include in the results. Using the operator AND always narrows the results since each keyword must be found in the item record. Using the Boolean operator OR between two or more terms will tell the database to return items in the results that have any of those terms. This is great for searches where there are many different terms that could be used to retrieve information on a topic. 
Using the operator OR always expands the results since it provides more options for keywords that may be used to retrieve the results. Finally, using the Boolean operator NOT before a term will tell the database not to include any items in the search results that include that term. This is great for searches where a term may be strongly associated with one or more of the concepts, but only one concept is relevant to the search. Please note that the operator NOT is rarely used in searching because it can eliminate relevant results if it's not used carefully. It is always handy when you plan to use Boolean search operators to brainstorm a list of keywords before starting the search. We like to start with a statement that describes the topic of the information that we need. Then we identify the core concepts in that statement. Finally, we brainstorm additional keywords for each of the core concepts in our statement. You will want to keep this list and add to it as you find more terms that are relevant to your search. After you feel you have a good start to your list of keywords, choose a database you would like to search and go to the advanced search screen. For this search, we'll be using JSTOR and Political Science Complete to demonstrate the process of building a search. In most databases, the advanced search screen will provide you with three boxes that are already connected with the Boolean operator AND, or it will provide an option to add more boxes. Please note, we do not recommend changing this pull-down menu to OR it's better to use OR inside the box rather than to change this pull-down menu. It gets messy. Just ask a librarian if you want to know more about this. To begin your search, all you need to do is enter one word from each of the concepts in your brainstormed list of terms into the search boxes and then click Enter. Voila! This is a very basic Boolean search. The real power to Boolean searching comes when you add additional terms to each box separated by the word OR. OR provides the database with options for which term to choose from within that search box. In this search, one term from each box will appear in the search results, but the database has two options to choose from when searching the terms that are listed in the second search box, and three terms to choose from when pulling terms from the third box. This is at least six searches rolled into one. Just imagine yourself saying to the database, hey database, Find me some articles on women's rights in the Middle East that also mention social movements or activism or advocacy. As you can see, Boolean searching is powerful, but it can feel tricky to learn. So take a moment, pause this video, and try this in your own favorite database to get a feel for how it can broaden or narrow your search. <sighs> you are probably exhausted at this point in the video, but don't worry, we are almost done. We just want to make sure that you know about two fancy search techniques, forward searching and backward searching. When you find a great article that is essential to your research, it's always a good idea to see who has referenced that article since it was published. This research technique is called cited reference search or forward searching. We recommend doing this with a few articles that you feel are nearly perfect uh, when it comes to representing the concepts in your paper or your literature review. To do this, first review the articles you have already found. Choose a few favorites that seem to perfectly meet the needs of your topic. Next, take the title of one of those perfect articles and put it into Google Scholar. Then, in the entry for that article in your Google Scholar search results, click on the Cited By link to see a list of articles that cited your original article. This is a pretty cool feature, right? Well, Google Scholar is the best tool available for all disciplines, but if you are conducting research in the sciences, check out the same feature in databases like PubMed, Web of Science, and ScienceDirect. Now on to backward searching. Any guesses what this might be? Backward searching, also known as reference searching, is simply the act of looking at the work cited in an article to locate the references in an article that may be helpful to your topic. To begin with backward searching, simply review through the sources you have already found so far. Identify one that seems perfect in the way it addresses your topics. Then review the references in that article. The reference list may be called a bibliography or a works cited list. In this list, look for titles that are related to your topic. You may find that you need to read through particularly relevant sections of the article in order to locate sources that best fit your needs. Finally, Use the library research tools to find the full text of the sources 
that you found in your references or bibliography. Using library tools to access the full text of an article is easier said than done. Many people find this part confusing, so let's take a couple of minutes to review the steps for determining if McCain Library has the full text of an article or if it needs to be requested through interlibrary loan. The first question to ask yourself is whether the work you are trying to find is a book or an article. If the item is a book, use the Find Books tab, this is also known as WorldCat, to see if it's available through McCain Library. If the book is not listed as available, request the item from other libraries directly using the button Request from Other Libraries within the Find Books tool. If the item is an article, use the Journals A to Z button to see if it's available through McCain Library. This tool will identify which database provides the full text access to the journal that the article is in. Be sure to search for the journal by the journal name and not by the title of the article. Also, pay attention to the date ranges next to each database name. Only two of the databases listed in this list provide access to the 1989 issue of Feminist Review. If you're not able to find the name of the publication in the Journals A to Z tool or the dates that you need to access the article, place a request through Interlibrary Loan for the article. It will be emailed to you directly within just a few days. Hey, that's it. Thanks for listening. You've been great. If you need any help, contact a librarian or CWS tutor. We would love to meet with you.